downy mildew affects plants of all ages. Although the disease only infects foliage, a reduction in photosynthetic activity early in plant development result in stunted plants and yield reduction especially in cucumber. Free mature defoliation may also result in fruit sun scald due to over exposure to direct sunlight. Symptoms of downy mildew infection exhibit themselves differently on the various cucurbit crops. Symptom on cucumber, squash and pumpkin. Symptoms on cucumber and squash are angular lesions that are limited by the leaf vines. During periods of leaf wetness from dew, irrigation or rainfall, incipient lesions can become conspicuously water soaked. This is the earliest symptom produced by the disease, but will disappear as moisture dissipates. Early lesions are light green in appearance and become chlorotic and finally necrotic as host plant cell die. Severe infection result in leaves that are completely dead and curled up. This symptom has been described as wild fire as the leaves appear to be burned. Peronosclerospora Downy mildew or grassy stop of sorghum, downy mildew, Peronosclerospora sorghi. Philippine downy mildew, Peronosclerospora philippinensis. Grassy top in maize, Scleroptora macrospora. The most characteristic symptom is the development of chlorotic sticks on the leaves. Plants exhibit a stunted and bushy appearance due to shortening of the internode. White downy growth is seen on the lower surface of leaf. Downy growth also occurs on bracts of green unopened male flowers in the tassel. Small to large leaves are noticed in the tassel. Proliferation of axillary buds on the stalk of tassel and the cob is common that is called grassy top. Symptoms and pathogens. The fungus grows as white downy growth on both surface of the leaves consisting of sporangia spore and sporangia. Sporangia spores are quite short and stout branch profusely into series of pointed steric matter which bear hyaline oblong or ovoid sporangia that means conidia. Sporangia germinate directly and infect the plants. In advanced stages, woo spores are formed which are spherical, thick-walled and deep thrown. What is the favorable condition for these pathogens? Low temperature 21 to 33 degrees centigrade. High relative humidity that means 90 percent relative humidity and drizzling. Young plants are highly susceptible. Disease cycle of this pathogen. The primary source of infection is through woo spores in soil and also dormant mycelium present in the infected maize seeds. Secondary spread is through airborne conidia. Depending on the pathogen species, the insil source of disease inoculum can be oospores that overwinter in the soil or conidia produced in infected overwintering crop debris and infected neighboring plants. Some species that cause downy mildew can also be seed borne, although this is largely restricted to seed that is fresh and has high moisture content. At the onset of the growing season, at soil temperatures above 20 degrees centigrade, whose pore in the soil germinate in response to root exudates from susceptible maize seedlings. The germ tube infects the underground section of maize plants leading to characteristic symptom of systemic infection including extensive chlorosis and stunted growth. If the pathogen is seed borne, whole plant shows symptom whose spores are reported to survive in nature 
for up to 10 years. Once the fungus has colonized host tissue, sporangiospores, that means conidiopores, emerge from stomata and produce sporangia, that means conidia, which are wind and rain splash disseminated and initiate secondary infection. Sporangia are always produced in the night. They are fragile and cannot be disseminated more than a few hundred meters and do not remain viable for more than a few hours. Germination of sporangia is dependent on the availability of free water on this leaf surface. Initial symptom of disease that means chloritic specks and streaks that elongate parallel to veins occur in three days. Conidia are produced profusely during the growing season. As the crop approaches senescence, whose spores are produced in large numbers. Pathogen Sclerospora The genus is represented by 15 species, of which 13 are known to occur in India. All the species of Sclerospora are obligate parasite causing diseases in members of family Graminae. The serious and common species Sclerospora graminicola parasitize Bajara, that is Penicetum typhoids, causing the disease known as green air disease or downy mildew disease of Bajara. Sclerospora graminicola is also parasitic on Citaria italica, the foxtail cross. Other common Indian species of Sclerospora are Sclerospora sorghei on Sorghum vulgar and Sclerospora maidis on maize. Symptom of the disease caused by Sclerospora The disease has been reported from almost all the Bajra growing areas of the country. Although the disease is sporadic in nature, the loss to Bajra graph may be up to 27 or 30 percent. The symptom of the disease appear in two different stages. Downy mildew state in which the lowest surface of the leaf gets covered with white downy growth of the fungus. Greenness stage in which ears or cobs get affected. Indian strains of Clerospora produce more of oospore and less of sporangiospores. As a result of this, the downy mildew stage on the leaves is not as conspicuous as the greenness stage. The affected plants show stunted and dwarfed growth and become fairly yellow in color, giving a chic appearance. Sooner or later, the leaves start showing chlorosis in streaks on the upper surface. Just below the streaks on the lower surface, fine downy growth of the fungus may be observed. The chloritic areas turn brown and in advanced stages, shredding of the leaves along the streaks or veins may take place. Usually the lateral nodules buds are stimulated to grow and develop into lateral shoots or branching. This abnormality is attributed to the disease because otherwise the plant is unbranched. The main symptoms however are produced in the inflorescence or ears. The floral organs of the inflorescence get deformed and transformed into twisted green leafy structure. This gives the ear an appearance of green leafy boss and it is because of this symptom that the name of the disease green ear has been adopted. Transformed ears may be of three types. The entire ear is transformed into a leafy moss and the cough length is normal. The lower part of the ear is transformed into a leafy moss and the upper part bears grains, the cob length is normal. The third stage is the development of cob is totally suppressed and in its place a bunch of leafy structures develop. All the floral parts become hypertrophic and malformed. The bristles of the spikelets become hypertrophic and contorted. The stamens and pistil become sterile and leaf-like or may be suppressed altogether. 
In advanced stages, the affected plants bear green leafy years along with brown twisting and shredding leaves. Side branches of the affected plants may bear leafy moss instead of years. Anatomically, also the symptoms are apparent. In green air disease leaves, the vascular bundles lack the sclerified of epidermal cells and the stomato is missing. Thallus of sclerospora. The thallus in sclerospora is eucorbic and is made up of well developed filamentous xenocytic endoparasitic mycelium consisting of branched aseptic hyphae. The hyphae are intercellular and freely branched. The fungus draws its nourishment from the host cells by means of hostoria, which are digitate button shaped in the stem cells, but are simple branched finger shape occupying major portion of the cell cavity of the leaf. The fungus is an obligate endoparasite and therefore never kills the host tissue. The disease can be checked by adoption of some way. Rotation of crops avoiding the bajra and related crops for long season may considerably check the spread of the disease. Removal of disease from the fields may check the secondary infection. Spraying of plants with dithane M45 also helps in controlling the disease. Seed treatment with metalaxyl 25 or metalaxyl 35 kills the pathogen present in the seeds and helps in controlling the disease. Seed treatment followed with one spray of metalaxyl effectively control the disease. Studies on treatment with certain fungicide carried out under All India Coordinated Millet Improvement Program suggested that 50% control of this disease could be achieved through seed treatment. The fungicide tested were a mixture of 0.1% agrasan and 0.4% theram. Use of disease resistant varieties is the only effective measure to control and check the spread of the disease. The resistant varieties currently used are HB5, PHP10 and PHP14. Paranospora. This is the most advanced family of order Paranosporils. It comprises six genera with numerous species. All of them are important plant pathogen which are obligate parasites of flowering plants such as onion, grape, bajra, jowar, mice, pea, turnip, peach, tobacco and many crucifers. The disease caused by the Paranosporaceae are called downy mildews. The mycelium is branched, tubular and xenocytic. The hyphae are strictly intercellular and occur in the stem but more commonly in the leaf. They absorb nutrition by sending vesicular or branched finger like hostoria into the host cells. The hostoria do not perforate the plasma membrane of the host cell but simply push it in and invaginate. The sporangiospore that means conidiophores are distinct and of determinate growth. They arise from an endophytic mycelium emerge through the stomato to come into the air when humidity is sufficiently high and branch characteristically. The individual genera of the family in fact distinguished on the basis of the form of the sporangiospore. Each branch bears a few to many short delicate branchlets. A single ovoid or fiery form sporangium is formed at the tip of ultimate branch let called a steric mata. The sporangia are deciduous and thus get detached when mature. The detached sporangia are disseminated by wind and landing on a suitable host. The sporangium in the genera except paranospora behave in two different ways. It germinate either discharging a number of small fibrillagellate reniform juice pores directly form a short jump tube 
under warmer or dry condition thus assuming the role of a conidium the germ tube formed in whatever manner enters the host through stomata and form the mycelium pseudopernospora pseudopernospora is a species of water mold known for causing downy mildew on cooker pits such as cantaloupe cucumber pumpkin squash and watermelon this water mold is an important pathogen of all these crops especially in areas with high humidity and rainfall it has become one of the most important disease in cucumber production considered a highly destructive foliar disease of cucurbit successful breeding in the mid 20th century provided adequate control of downy mildew in cucumber without the use of fungicide the resurgence in virulence has caused growers great concern and substantial economic losses while downy mildew in other cucurbit crops continues to be a early hindrance the pathogen causes angular chloritic lesion on the foliage these lesion appear angular because they are bound by leaf vines during humid condition inspection of the underside of the leaf reveals gray brown to purplish black fungal growth this downy material is the sporulation of the pathogen magnification of the sporulation reveals the acutely and dichotomously branched sporangia spore bearing lemon shaped sporangia eventually leaves will turn necrotic and curl upwards the disease is sometimes called wild fire because of how rapidly it progresses as if the crop were burned by fire symptom on watermelon and cantaloupe are different from on other cucurbits leaf spots are typically not angular and turn brown to black in color often an exaggerated upward leaf curling will occur disease of the leaves result in three major effect that pathogen reduce the yield a greater proportion of misshapen fruit especially in cucumber sun scalded fruit due to increased exposure to direct sunlight especially in watermelon and winter squash pathogen biology pseudopernospora cubensi is an obligate parasite it requires live host tissue in order to survive and reproduce because of this characteristic the pathogen must overwinter in an area that does not experience hard frost and where wild or cultivated cooker pits are present the spores are dispersed through wind to neighboring plants and fields and often over long distances symptoms appear 4 to 12 days after infection the pathogen thrives under cool and moist condition but can do well under a wide range of conditions optimum condition for sporulation are 15 degree centigrade with 6 to 12 hours of moisture presence often in the form of morning dew even when high daytime temperature are not favorable for the pathogen that is more than 35 degree centigrade night time temperature may be very suitable whose spores that means thick wall resting spores of pseudospernospora cubensis and rare and their role in nature is unknown mycelium of plasmopara it is freely branched and cenocytic the hyphae are numerous and vary in size the fungus is strictly intercellular some of the hyphae gives off lateral outgrowth which penetrate the host cell and swell inside to form vesicular astoria the latter secrete enzyme by the help of which they absorb food from protoplast of the host cells once established within the host the mycelium forms pads of hyphae in the substomatal cavities a group of hyphae grows upright from the hyphal pad and emerges through stomata function as sporangiospores 
Each sporangiospore is a long monopodially branched structure. The lateral branches vary in number from 3 to 6. Each branch bears branchlets. The branches and the branchlets lie more or less at right angles to the axis bearing them. The growth of the sporangiospore is determinate and thus bears sporangia when fully developed. A single sporangium is formed at the tip of an ultimate delicate branchlet called the sterigmata. In plural that is sterigmata, in singular that is sterigma. The sporangia are shed at this stage and are dispersed by air. If the detached sporangia which float in the air happen to land on a suitable moist substrate that means leaf of the host. They germinate a circular pore appears at the papilla by the dissolution of its thin wall. The uninucleate daughter protoplast emerge through the opening. After emergence, each protoplast furnishes itself with a pair of flagella. The liberated juice pore are plano-convex in form. There is a ridge along the flat side near which lies the nucleus. The two flagella arises one on either side of the nucleus and are of unequal length. The short flagellum which is of tinsel type is directed forward and the longer one which is whiplash type trails behind when the juice pore is in motion. The liberated juice pore swim about in a thin film of water for a while, about half an hour and then comes to rest in the vicinity of the stomato. Each quiescent that means resting juice pore rounds up and secrete a thin wall around it. Soon the globus cyst produces a germ tube and gains entry into the host tissue through a stomata. Rarely the sporangium germinates directly by a germ tube like a conidium. Sexual reproduction in plasma para. It is oogamous. Like albugo, the sex organs are developed within the host tissue at the tips of adjacent hypha. The oogonium arises as a globular swelling at the tip of female hypha. It is then cut off by a cross wall at its base. The young oogonium is uniformly multinucleate. As it advances towards maturity, a central rounded dense oplasm with many nuclei is separated from the peripheral vacuolated multinucleate periplasm. The mature oplasm is uninucleate and functions as an ooze sphere or egg. The antheridium is developed at the end of male hypha lying near the oogonium. The tip of the male hypha enlarges into clavate that means club shape, swelling which is later cut off by a cross wall from the supporting hypha. The clavate cell is the antheridium. It contains about a dozen male nuclei and is applied to the side of the oogonium. Fertilization in plasma para. At the point of contact with the oogonium, the antheridium sends forth a delicate tube known as the fertilization tube. The it pierces the oogonial wall, passes through the periplasm and enters the oospear. At this stage, the tip of the fertilization tube dissolves. A single male nucleus migrates through it to fuse with the egg nucleus. The fusion between the two gamete nuclei may be delayed until spring. The egg with the two nuclei is called the zygote. The zygote soon secrete a thick rough wall to become an oospore. This enters upon a period of rest. The oospore wall is differentiated into an inner thick smooth endospore surrounded by a thin round exosphere. Germination of oospore. Following spring, when the condition favorable for growth set in, the oospore germinate. Prior to germination, the male and female nuclei fuse. 
At the time of germination, the fused nucleus undergoes repeated division to form 50 or more nuclei. Where meiosis takes place is not definitely known. Some hold that first two divisions are meiotic. Bose in the year 1946, however, reported that the reduction of the nucleus to initiate the haplophase takes place in the third or fourth division of Uspor nucleus. The prevalent view favors gametangial meiosis and diploid life cycle. At this stage, the Uspor wall bursts and germ tube protrudes through the small crack. The tip of the germ tube swells up to form a terminal ovate sporangium. The multinucleate protoplast of the Uspor flows into the sporangium. It is then cut off from the germ tube by a septum. Within the sporangium are differentiated 50 or more uninucleate 5 flagellate reniform juice pore. They escape through an apical pore in sporangial wall. The liberated zoomiospore germinated in the usual manner or on the same or a different host to which it may be carried. Now we will summarize the session. Fungi and oomycetes are the two most important group of eukaryotic plant pathogens. Fungi form a separate kingdom and are evolutionarily related to animals. The oomycetes, also known as water molds, are a group of several hundred organisms that include some of the most diverse plant pathogens. In spite of the distinct evolutionary origin of the two groups, fungi and oomycetes use infection strategy that have much in common. Paranosclerospora sorghi is a plant pathogen. It infects susceptible plants through sexual oospores, which survive in the soil and sexual sporangia, which are disseminated by wind. Symptoms of sorghum downy mildew include chlorosis, shredding of leaves, and death. Paranosclerospora cerci infect maize and sorghum around the world, causes the most severe yield reduction. The disease is controlled mainly through genetic resistance, chemical control, crop rotation, and strategic timing of planting.